What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to this episode of uh, There Is Only Warhammer where I'm going through the updates that are coming out from GW and the Warhammer community and looking at um, close combat weapons in this episode. So, uh, but I've not been able to print out the sheets uh, so I'm having to read from my laptop on this occasion um, until I work out another way of doing things. Um, but we'll, we'll get for it anyway. So, close combat weapons. So let's have a look then. Uh, this was from the 19th. Okay, so it says, let's take a look at some close combat weapons, shall we? We've seen already that shooting weapons in the new Warhammer 40,000 use a strength AP damage system. And melee kit is much the same. The main difference is being uh, that there is no range on them. And a lot of them will use the user's strength as their basis. Let's look at some examples. We'll start with the classic power weapon lineup. Okay. We've got the, um, the power axe, power maul, and power sword here. Uh, range, melee, type, melee. Right, power axe, strength plus one. Power maul, plus two. Power sword, user. Okay. The power axe has an AP of minus two. The power sword. Sorry, the Power Maul has an AP of minus 1. And the Power Sword has an AP of minus 3. And the damage on all of them is 1. No abilities on either. So that's that's what is on that table. Sorry I can't show you at this moment in time. In the current edition of Warhammer 40,000, the axe is the go-to weapon for a lot of folks. Players gladly took the unwieldy rule in exchange for AP2 and a bonus to strength. Now the obvious choice no sorry, now the obvious choice is far from obvious, as they clearly all have their uses. That sword, for example, is looking pretty deadly against most things, with the AP minus three helping it against every type of foe. Uh, yeah, the power sword, yeah. Um, even with no bonus to strength, using the new wounding chart shows that a strength for Space Marine is wounding everything up to toughness 7 on 5s, which is good because a lot of our models have swords. And I bet there's a lot of you out there that are, are sure glad you've been magnetising your models. I don't tend to go with that for especially things like infantry and that, but, it, but now it seems it's kind of become more of a useful thing to do. So yeah, I'm, like I say, I bet you're glad about that. Even the humble chainsword gets a boost, no longer just a standard combat weapon, the iconic combat weapon wielded by the Adeptus Astartes and many other forces now gives its bearer more attacks in combat. Perfect for grinding through hordes of low armoured troops, the chainsword now functions on the battlefield, how it always has in your head. This, um, I'll just say that's good because I always thought it was a bit of a pants weapon before, this change also helps differentiate dedicated combat troops from those just wielding improvised or sidearm weapons. Right, so weapon, chainsword, range, melee, type of melee, strength, user, AP 0, damage 1, abilities. Each time the bearer fights it can make one additional attack with this weapon. Much better! Because before I only modelled them for an aesthetic reason really, because I just thought they were rubbish. But that's better, you get an additional attack, nice. We can see that all of the above still only do one damage, meaning that while they chip wounds off bigger stuff, they are primarily infantry killers. What about some anti-armor stuff though? Check out the power fist. Right, power fist, here we go. Range melee, type melee, yeah. Strength times two. AP minus three. D, D3 damage. Abilities. When attacking with this weapon, you must subtract one from the hit roll. I suppose because it's a bit more... No, just more... Um, I don't know what the word... Uh, at the cost, there you go. At the cost of being more cumbersome to swing. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. More cumbersome. It's dishing out multiple damage with every hit and a strength that will find it easy to wound anything in the game. Uh, yes. Another high damage option is force weapons. Take a Grey Knight squad of any sort. Every guy in there has a blade that as well as having all the benefits of the equivalent power armour, uh, sorry, power weapon, also dishes out D3 damage on every wound. Those guys are going to be phenomenal up close killers as they should be. Do really tempting me with all sorts of stuff now. 
D3 damage is good, but if you really want to kill something, try the Reaper Chainsword. This deals a flat 6 damage to whatever it wounds. That's enough to carve a Chaos Lord in half, and a couple of hits will wreck most small and medium vehicles in the fight phase. Ooh, that sounds good. Make no mistake, when facing a dedicated melee unit, the stuff is going to die in combat really, really fast. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this episode. Um, see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks. Bye-bye.